Hi, welcome to Grandma from Pambula's little YouTube. How are you all? Oh, I'm so thrilled about Violet Mackerel. What did you think? Did you like Violet Mackerel? I thought she was so much fun. I wonder if you guys thought about getting a little box. Grandma got a little box and she's been collecting special little things that she finds when she goes on her walks or when I go on my walks and thinking about the ideas that I have when that happens. Do you wanna see what's in there? I went for a tiny little box. These are the things that I found. I found this little bit of, it's like coral and it was on the beach. And I stumbled on that when I was walking with Pappy and I had the idea to have pancakes for breakfast. <laughs> That's a great idea because I love pancakes and Pappy makes them, I don't make them. So my idea when I found this was to have pancakes for breakfast and it was a great idea. <laughs> they were delicious. <laughs> I love pancakes. <laughs> Who loves pancakes? <gasps> then I found this little yellow shell. I don't know if you can see it properly, but it's a proper shell with no bits missing, but so tiny, tiny little scallop shell, and it's kind of gold in colour. So that's a bit unusual. I found that when I had paddled across to the other side of the Pambula River, to the beach that Pappy and I call our beach, and it was sitting just there. And the idea I had was to go swimming in the cold water, because it's winter here, and see if I could just go for a little swim in the freezing cold water, because I think it'd be really good for me. So that's the idea I had when I did that. Guess what? I didn't do it. <laughs> the water was too cold. But it's still an idea that I've got buzzing around in there. Then, I found this tiny little shell, which is kind of brownie pink. And I really love this one very much. And when I found this one, I thought about an idea to make like a magic circle where I can look through my magic, oh, my magic circle's got a string on it. I can look through my magic circle and I can see what you have all been up to. When I look through my circle, I can see what you've been ha doing in your lives. I'll do that a bit later, but how good is that idea? So I made a magic circle. I made it with washi tape that's not sticky anymore because it was very old washi tape. So I made my magic circle out of that so I can look and see what you've been doing through my circle. And then I found a little tiny button and it's kind of pinky red and I like it a lot. I wonder what it's from. I found that on the ground when I was at the shops and the idea I had when I found this one was that maybe I'll make another birthday crown. Um, what would I make this time? Maybe a rainbow? I don't know. I'll see. I'll just keep working on it and see if I can come up with a good idea for another birthday crown. Then I would have two birthday crowns. We'll see how I go. But that's the little tiny button I found. And the other one was a little badge. Someone must have lost it or it dropped out. A little badge. <laughs> My idea when I found this was that it was time to read another Violet Mackerel story. So shall I get on with that? <laughs> this is today's book. It's called Violet Mackerel's Remarkable Recovery. I wonder what she's recovering from. Or who's recovering? Violet Mackerel has an extremely sore throat. It feels awful to talk and terrible to swallow and horrible to eat. Oh, I've had 
sore throats before they're yuck because I really love eating and I hate it when I can't eat all the yummy food and everything's scratchy and sore. Have you had a sore throat? Oh, poor Violet Mackerel. Oh, looks like she's got some soup. Her older sister Nicola and her brother Dylan have just left for school. Violet has been home from school all week. And today, Mummy's taking her to see Dr. Singh. Violet likes Dr. Singh because he asks good questions such as, would you like to hear your heartbeat through my stethoscope? And do you see how my examination table goes up and down? Well, they're things I would like to know too. She's off to the doctors. Also, his name makes her slightly wonder if he might be a singing sort of doctor, especially as he doesn't mind making up little tunes. Good morning, Violet Mackerel, and how are you today? That's quite a nasty bruise you have, but it should fade away. <laughs> oh no, does your doctor sing to you like that? Mine doesn't. Mine doesn't even let me have a go with a stethoscope. Ugh. When Violet and Mum get to the doctor's surgery, they sit in the waiting room. Mum knits a few rows of a soft rosy cardigan. She is a very good knitter. Soon the lady at the desk says, Violet Mackerel, which means it's my time for Violet and Mum to go and see Dr. Zing. There they are sitting. There's Mum knitting. And there's Violet. And it's time for Violet and Mum to go and see Dr. Zing. How are you this morning, he asks, feeling her forehead. My throat hurts, croaks Violet. It feels as if there is a cactus in there. Dr. Singh presses a big fat lollipop stick on her tongue. Say, ah, oh, ah, oh, says Violet. And again, says Dr. Singh, ah, oh, says Violet. Aw, oh, she does look a bit crook, doesn't she? He looks like a nice doctor though. Hmm, says Dr. Singh, who has been looking down Violet's throat. I'm afraid that's a bad case of tonsillitis. <sighs> Violet has had tonsillitis before, lots of times. It is when the two bits at the back of your throat, which are called tonsils, swell up and feel as though you've swallowed a cactus. I'll give you some lozenges for now to help with the prickles, said Dr. Singh but I think it would be a good idea to have your tonsils taken out. <coughs> have her tonsils taken out? That made me cough. <laughs> Violet, however, does not think that this is a good idea. She generally prefers not to have things taken out, especially of her body. Look at her with her crossed arms saying, ah, uh, no thanks, no thanks. It's very simple operation at the hospital, explains Dr. Singh, and you'll be, a, you'll be asleep all the way through it, and then you'll need to stay at home afterwards to rest and eat ice cream. Hmm. Violet quite likes the idea of resting at home and eating ice cream, but she's not sure about the hospital part. She's never had an operation before. What will it be like to have no tonsils, she asks. <clears throat> The best thing is that you won't keep getting tonsillitis, says Dr. Singh. Anything else? asks Violet. Dr. Singh thinks. Well, some people find that their voices change a little bit after they've had their tonsils out. Hmm. This is very interesting to Violet, who always wonders about singing when she sees Dr. Singh, even though she realises that he's not really a singing sort of doctor. Violet wonders what her new voice might be like. Perhaps it will be an opera singing voice, opera, like the ones you sometimes hear on the radio. Perhaps when Violet is singing in the bath, her voice will carry down into the garden and all the way along the street and neighbours will say, oh, who is doing that lovely opera singing? And mum will say, oh, that is Violet. She always sings like that since she had her tonsils out. Violet thinks she would quite like to be an opera singer, not just singing in the bath, but also on the radio sometimes. Could my voice turn into an opera singing voice? Squeaks Violet. Well, not right away, says Dr. Singh. Your throat will be a bit sore for any kind of singing straight after your operation, but I've certainly seen some remarkable recoveries in my time. That's, I think, 
people listening to Violet singing. Is that her up there? And that's all the singing coming out. <laughs> that's in her imagination. <laughs> oh, she's funny. Violet decides that hers will be the most remarkable recovery Dr. Singh has ever seen in his whole life. Until then, he says, would you like pink throat lozenges that taste like strawberries or purple throat lozenges that taste like grapes? It is an excellent question, Violet thinks. Purple, please, she says. I would have had the other ones. I would have had the pink throat lozenges. Can you guess? I would have. They taste like strawberries. Who wouldn't have that? Anyway. Purple, please, she says. Dr. Singh pops open a packet of lozenges and gives one to Violet so it can start soothing her throat prickles right away. The purple lozenge looks like a precious crystal in her hand and it gives Violet an idea. On the drive home, Violet's idea is slowly growing into a theory. It is called the theory of giving small things. And it works like this. If someone has a problem and you give them something small like a feather or a pebble or a purple lozenge, then that small thing might have a strange and special way of helping them. Of course, it might help in an ordinary way. Handkerchiefs are helpful for runny noses and band-aids are good for grazed knees and purple lozenges are excellent when you have tonsillitis. But the small thing might also help in an extraordinary way. And that is the interesting part. Violet suspects, for example, that when Vincent picks a flower for mum, it is not just the flower, but a sort of special wish tucked somewhere inside it that makes mum have such a nice smile. Vincent is mum's boyfriend. That happened. Remember in the last book, they only just met. Vincent had the little bird statue things at the market. So mum and Vincent are now boyfriend and girlfriend. Ooh, she's got a crush. And so has Vincent got a crush. Um, Violet suspects, for example, that when Vincent picks a flower for mum, it is not just the flower, but a sort of special wish tucked somewhere inside it that makes mum have such a nice smile. Vincent is mum's boyfriend. He comes to their house a lot and he quite often picks mum a flower on the way. Oh, that's nice. Wonder if you have a boyfriend or a girlfriend and if they pick you flowers. She also suspects that when Dr. Singh gave her that purple lozenge, there was tucked inside it a little bit of the singing part of his name, which will be very helpful for turning her everyday voice into an opera singing voice. You're very quiet, says mum to Violet. Are you a bit worried about going to hospital? Mm, maybe a bit, says Violet. Have you ever been to hospital? Well, said mum, the last time I went to hospital was when you were being born. Were you nervous? Mm, maybe, but I think I was too excited to notice, says mum. That is a bit how Violet feels too. In a photo album at Violet's house, there is a picture that was taken just after Violet was born. In it, she looks a bit like a tiny pink hairy monkey wrapped in a soft blanket. Mum is very tired and there are teardrops on her cheeks but she has the look on her face of birthdays and Christmases all at once. It is Violet's favorite photo. I love that. That would be the look on my face when I had all my babies. It would have been the look of birthdays and Christmases all at once. Oh, oh I love that. That's the mum and Violet when Violet was a baby. I don't think she looks like a monkey though. I think she looks like a very cute little baby. I had those looks on my faces. Well, I've only got one face, but I had the look of birthdays and Christmas on my face when all my grandbabies were born. I got to see you all straight away. And it made me so happy. In my heart and my eyes had some tears. Look, there's the mum and Violet. Oh, Violet looks so sweet. Did you know I was going to be a girl called Violet? asked Violet. 
I knew you were going to be a girl, says Mum, but at first no one could think of a name for you. Why did you decide to call me Violet? asked Violet. Well, after you were born, the midwife gave me a perfect Violet for the little vase in my bed. That's what gave me the idea. I love violets. I think I told you that before. They're my favourite flower, wild violet. Violet smiles. Would you have called me Rose if the midwife had picked you a perfect rose? Oh, I love the name Rose as well. That's one of my favourites. Maybe, says Mum, and it's one of my favourite flowers. Anyway, Grandma, read the book. Maybe, says Mum, would you have called me Daffodil if you, she had picked you a perfect daffodil? Mm, probably not, says Mum. Violet thinks about the theory of giving small things and she's quite glad that the midwife gave Mum a perfect violet. A violet is a very small flower. It must have been just the right sort of small thing to help Mum when she was tired after having a baby and needed to choose a good name. I'm not nervous about having my tonsils out, said Violet. Not really. Then her throat is too prickly for any more talking. They must be on the way. It looks like she's got a seatbelt on. Oh, and that is exactly what violets look like. I'm growing three different sorts of violets in the backyard. A few days later, Violet finds out another interesting thing about having your tonsils out, which is the proper name for it. It's called a tonsillectomy. The day before her trip to hospital, the postman comes to Violet's house to deliver a box of wool to mum. I'm having a tonsillectomy tomorrow, Violet tells him. She wonders if he will be slightly jealous about all the ice cream and the change of voice. A tonsillectomy? You brave little thing, he says. Then later on, a lady comes to the door asking mum to sign a petition. I'm having a tonsillectomy tomorrow, Violet tells her. A tonsillectomy? Goodness me, she says. The lady clucks and tuts. No one seems to be at all jealous, but it is quite interesting to have so much clucking and tutting and people saying, goodness me. There's the lady at the door. Clucking and tutting. In the evening, Mum's boyfriend Vincent is there and he is cooking dinner for everyone. Violet looks down at the kitchen floor and she sighs deeply. She hopes that Vincent will ask her what is wrong. But he is a little bit deaf and anyway, there is a very loud noise of chips frying in the pan. She sighs much more loudly. <sighs> Still, nothing. Now, I forgot that Vincent's a little bit deaf. I'm having a tonsillectomy tomorrow, says Violet. She tries to sniffle a little bit. I know, says Vincent. You get to stay in bed and eat ice cream for a week. I'm so jealous. I'm going to have a remarkable recovery, she tells him. When you hear me singing in the bath, you won't even know it's me. You will have to ask mum who is doing that lovely opera singing and mum will say, it is Violet. And soon she will be on the radio. <laughs> There she is in the bar, singing. Violet has been making up a verse for a song she likes called My Favourite Things. It is from a movie about children with a nice nanny and Violet likes making up new verses for it. Her newest verse goes like that. I think I know what movie that is. New coloured pencils and aprons with pockets. Films about fairies and books about rockets. Small purple lozenges from Dr. Singh. These are a few of my favourite things. Violet wishes she could sing it for Vincent and Mum, but her throat is too sore. Before she goes to sleep, Violet says goodnight to her tonsils. The next morning, Violet wakes up with a strange feeling inside her. It is called butterflies, which is odd, Violet thinks, since it feels so much more like rhinosauruses. <laughs> Rhinoceroses. <laughs> Rhinoceroses. <laughs> Rhinoceroses. Violet can't have any breakfast because you're not supposed to eat before you have an operation. There is a nice smell of toast coming from the kitchen. The smell makes the rhinoceroses stamp around crossly inside Violet. Mummy's in her bedroom getting dressed and Violet goes in for a chat. I've changed my mind, says Violet. I'm going to keep my tonsils and have some toast. Hmm, that's a shame, says Mum. Vincent bought you so much ice cream 
that, that I can hardly close the freezer door. All the same flavour? asks Violet. All different flavours, says Mum. Violet thinks, hmm. Also, says Mum, I was looking forward to hearing the next verse of My Favourite Things being sung in your new voice. Violet had been looking forward to that too. So Violet takes a very deep breath and decides that maybe she will still have the tonsillectomy after all. There she is thinking about it. Sometimes you are a bit rhinocerosy when you're doing something new that might be just a little bit scary, but really a new adventure. She packs a small bag to take to the hospital. She first packs some ordinary things like a book and a teddy. Then she packs some other things. One is a blue china bird that Vincent gave her because she feels it may have some of Vincent's braveness tucked inside. Vincent has been backpacking all over the world and that is the sort of braveness that is very useful when you are having a tonsillectomy. Next, she packs a woolly scarf that mum made for her because she feels it might be... It might have a sort of hug tucked into it, which might be helpful when you need to make a remarkable recovery. And finally, she packs a get well soon card that her big brother Dylan made for her. It has a picture of her singing in the opera with lots of musical notes coming out of her mouth. Dylan is a very good violin player and she feels he may have tucked some musical genius into that card. It is just the sort of thing that helps when you want to sing opera on the radio. There's a suitcase. I love this idea that the little presents and the little things that you get have special, special things inside them. After Nicola and Dylan have gone to school, mum puts a basket of woolen needles in the back of the van so she can do some knitting while Violet is having her operation. Violet puts her bag beside it and then they are ready to go. On the way, Violet tries to think of some new words for my favorite things, but the rhinoceroses keep distracting her. The waiting room at the hospital is bigger than at Dr. Singh's. One of the people waiting is an old lady sitting by herself. She looks as though she's been there for a very long time. Mum notices her too. I feel as though I've seen her somewhere before, Mum whispers to Violet. The old lady has a green cardigan and a necklace of bright red beads and she is doing a funny thing with her hands. Her fingers, which have lots of rings on them, are all laced together and she's making her thumbs go round and round. Are you having a tonsillectomy? Violet asks the old lady. I wonder if she's doing this, where you cross your fingers and your thumbs go round and round. I wonder. The old lady smiles. No, I'm having an operation on my arm, she says. Do you have butterflies? asks Violet. Well, they feel more like rhinoceroses says the old lady. Violet smiles. While they wait, Violet asks the old lady to teach her how to do the trick with her thumbs. It is much harder than it looks. At first, Violet's thumbs won't go all the way around at all. Then they start going around, but they get into a bit of a tangle. The old lady tries to untangle them for her and Violet gets the giggles. Then the old lady gets the giggles. There is so much giggling that it is quite hard for Violet to do anything else except wipe her eyes with the old lady's clean handkerchief. Which smells a bit like lavender. But there is a lot of waiting to do and the old lady is a patient teacher. So eventually Violet can make her thumbs go round and round almost as well as the old lady can. Violet wishes she had a trick to teach the old lady, but she can't think of one. So instead, she shows her the things in her bag. The old lady especially likes the blue china bird. We especially like that. Can you do this? Can you do it? I wonder if you can. It reminds me of my garden when I was a little girl in England, she says. There were robins in the winter and their eggs were just that colour. Do you have a garden now, asks Violet. Yes, says the old lady, though lately my arm has been too sore to do much gardening. But when I am able to garden, I grow beautiful flowers. After your arm operation, will you be able to grow them again? Oh, I hope so, says the old lady. Dr. Singh says that after my tonsillectomy, my voice will change a bit, Violet tells the lady. 
Right now, I have an ordinary voice, but afterwards, I think it will change into an opera singing voice. Really? says the old lady. Yes, says Violet. You'll probably hear me on the radio sometime. My name is Violet Mackerel, just so you can be sure it is me. And maybe after your operation, your ordinary arm will turn into a super arm and then you'll be able to do lots of gardening and lots of other things too. When the neighbours can't get the lids off their jars, they will bring them to your house and you'll be able to do it first try. <laughs> The old lady laughs. It would be very handy to have a super arm, she says. Violet thinks about the theory of giving small things and she wishes she had a small thing that might help to change a sore arm into a super arm. She asks mum if there are any more purple lozenges. I don't know if you should have one right before your operation, says mum. It's not for me, says Violet. And mum gives her a purple lozenge. Violet wraps the purple lozenge up in a tissue like a present and gives it to the old lady. She explains the theory of giving small things and tells her about how tucked inside the purple lozenge there could be a little bit of Violet's own superness. Thank you, says the old lady. Then a man comes out and says in a loud voice, Iris MacDonald. That's me, says the old lady. How are your rhinoceroses? asks Violet. They're not too bad now, actually, says the old lady Iris MacDonald, putting the purple lozenge into her cardigan pocket. It was lovely to meet you, she says to Violet. Looks like the butterflies are all flying away. It was lovely to meet you too, says Violet. But Violet doesn't feel quite ready just yet to say goodbye and never see her new friend again. When we have both had remarkable recoveries, I think we should have tea together so you can hear my opera singing voice and I can see your super arm, said Violet. Let's do that, says Iris MacDonald. Promise, says Violet. I promise, says Iris MacDonald. Then they wave goodbye. Violet's rhinoceroses aren't too bad now either. The next time the man comes out, he says, Violet Mackerel. Violet and Mum pack up their things and follow him down a little corridor. They meet another doctor and a nurse, and the nurse shows Violet the bed that will be hers while she is in hospital. The mattress is a bit thinner than her bed at home, but it is as white as a cloud, and Violet quite likes it. She does not at all like the part where they give her a needle. Mm, it feels like a sharp little pinch in her arm, but it is over very, very quickly, and then she drifts off to sleep. Violet sleeps right through the tonsillectomy and when she wakes up, still on her cloud bed, mum is there and the tonsillectomy is finished. There are three whole new roses in the cardigan mum is knitting, so Violet must have been asleep for quite a long time. Hello, says mum, smiling. How are you feeling? Mm, a bit groggy, croaks Violet. She sleeps a bit more with mum next to her and then she wakes up again and watches mum knitting for a while. It is a nice thing to see while you are drowsing after a tonsillectomy. Soon she feels well enough to sit up and mum has a cup of tea and Violet has some ice to suck and then it is only a bit more time until the nurse says Violet is well enough to go home. When she gets home, Violet is still feeling groggy so she goes back to bed with a hot water bottle even though it is daytime outside. Nicola, who is a very good jewellery maker, has made her a beautiful necklace. The beads have little letters of the alphabet on them and they spell out, get well soon, Violet. That's the necklace there. I've done that sort of, made that sort of jewellery with you guys. I've still got it in my wardrobe, hanging up in my jewellery things. It is in a little box by Violet's bed. <coughs> I think it's there. Oh, look at Violet. Sleep well, darling girl. Have you got a hot water bottle? Oh, you don't. Some of you don't need it because it's summertime where you are, but it's wintertime here. I've got a hot water bottle. I like it a lot. Guess what colour it is? Can you guess? You're right. Violet drifts in and out of sleep and has strange dreams of butterflies with rhinoceros horns and rhinoceroses with butterfly wings. Rhinoceroflies 
and butter off officers with necklaces which say get well soon. Mum and Nicola and Dylan and Vincent come in and say hello. How are you feeling? But Violet is still too sleepy and groggy to say much back. <coughs> I like the rhinoceroses with the butterfly wings and the butterflies with the rhinoceros pointy bit there. That's very cool. The next morning though, she feels a bit better. Mum has to go out to a special knitting workshop, workshop. So Vincent comes around to look after Violet and they eat minty ice cream with pink bits. And they watch a movie about the children and the nanny with the song, My Favourite Things. Then Violet feels floppy again. So Vincent refills her hot water bottle and they listen to some opera music on the radio. My throat feels funny and I still feel a bit groggy, whispers Violet. Do you think that means my recovery isn't going to be remarkable? No, says Vincent. I think even very remarkable recoveries probably take a few days. Hmm, I think so too, says Violet, who is drifting off to sleep again. <clears throat> Look at her. She's got a bed on the chair. Oh, that's my favourite. When you're all snugged up on the couch with a pillow and your blanket and you can watch TV and eat ice cream. Oh, I'd give up my tonsils for a bit of that. Then, oh, I read that, didn't I? When she wakes up, Vincent has gone home and mum is back from the knitting workshop. She tries to refill Violet's water bottle, but Vincent has twisted the top in so tight that she can't get it out. After a little while, her face is all red from trying. It's no good, she says. My arm isn't strong enough. And then suddenly Violet remembers the old lady, Iris MacDonald. How are you going to find Iris MacDonald? asks Violet. How are we going to find Iris MacDonald? asks Violet scratchily. Who? says Mum. The old lady, Iris MacDonald. We promised we would have tea when we were better so she could hear my opera voice and I could see her super arm. But she doesn't have our phone number and we don't have hers. So how will we be able to have tea with her? Hmm, Mum thinks. She knows my name is Violet Mackerel, says Violet, and there aren't any many other mackerels in the phone book, so maybe she will look us up. She might, says Mum. But what if she doesn't quite remember my, my name, asks Violet. What if she remembers Violet, but not quite mackerel? Hmm, begins Mum. Let's phone the hospital and ask them and tell them it's emergency, says Violet. I'm not sure that this is really the kind of emergency that hospitals help with, said Mum. Mum thinks a bit more. Violet, it might be that Iris MacDonald was just a friend for the time you were in the hospital waiting room and not really the sort of friend for having tea with afterwards. This suggestion of Mum's makes Violet feel quite cross. Her throat is too sore from a tonsillectomy to have a cross voice, so instead she frowns until her eyebrows almost get in her eyes. Iris MacDonald is not that kind of friend, she says to Mum. Violet frowns more. Frowning is not as good as a cross voice, which people have to hear whether they want to or not. People have to be looking right at you to see how hard you are frowning, and Mum is not looking. Please, can I have my notebook? Violet asks Mum when her eyebrows are too tired to frown anymore. Mum brings a tray with a bowl of frosty forest berry ice cream a notebook and a pencil to Violet's bedroom. Violet starts a new page, which is called Thinking Outside the Square About Finding Iris MacDonald. Thinking outside the square is when you find extraordinary solutions to problems and puzzles, because extraordinary solutions are often better than the ordinary sort. It is one of Violet's favorite problem solving strategies. In brackets, after thinking outside the square about finding Iris MacDonald, Violet writes the Totsafim plot. The word Totsafim. <clears throat> There's a notebook. Totsafim. I don't remember what that was. Is made from the first letters of all the words in her plot. Next on the page, she draws a big square and inside the square, she writes her ordinary ideas, such as ask everyone we know if they know a nice old lady called Iris MacDonald. Ask everyone we know to ask everyone they know if they know a nice old lady called Iris MacDonald. 
Then outside the square, she writes her extraordinary ideas, such as hire one of those little aeroplanes that can write things in the clouds, in the sky, and write, if your name is Iris McDonald, could you please phone Violet Mackerel? And put an advertisement in the lost and found section of the newspaper, which says, lost, one old lady called Iris McDonald with a super arm. I love her ideas. They are all good ideas, Violet thinks, especially the ones outside the square, but it is very difficult to make any of them happen from your bed where you are still recovering from a tonsillectomy. That is the problem. She thinks about Iris McDonald somewhere out in the world recovering in her own bed and probably wondering about the girl she met in the waiting room. She might never hear Violet's opera singing voice and Violet might never see her super arm and they might never ever get together to have tea. That night before bed, while she is eating passion fruit ice cream, Violet is feeling sad. She asks Dylan if he will help her to find Iris McDonald, and he says he will put a notice about her in his violin case. Dylan plays his violin at the markets on Saturday mornings and people throw coins in his case. Violet is not sure if that's a good idea. Violet also asks Nicola if she will help to find Iris McDonald, and Nicola says she will put a sign on the notice board at school. I don't think Iris McDonald will see it there, says Violet. Violet says thank you to her brother and sister for trying, but before she goes to sleep, she decides that she will ring up Vincent to see if he has any ideas. The Totsafim plot didn't work. What does Totsafim stand for? Iris McDonald is the last. Find Iris McDonald. I need to know. What has she said? I have to go back here. Oh, thinking outside the square about finding Iris McDonald. Tots of Fim. Thinking outside the square about finding Iris McDonald. Now I understand. That was a bit tricky. <laughs> um, uh, the Tots of Fim plot, says Vincent thoughtfully. What's that? It was the plan to help me find Iris McDonald, who I met in the hospital waiting room. If it had worked and you had found her, what would you have said? Asks Vincent. Violet thinks, I hope your arm is feeling better and I'm glad we got to be friends in the waiting room, she says. Violet is surprised that it isn't a message about her opera singing voice or the super, super arm or even about the afternoon tea. Sometimes you don't even know what you think until someone asks you a question like that. When you are a backpacker like me, said Vincent, you meet lots and lots of special people just once and never get to see them again. So what I do sometimes is send messages to the stars for them. Do they get your messages? Asked Violet, whose scratchy throat is getting too tired for much more talking. I don't know, said Vincent, but maybe they feel something special when they look up at the stars at night. There's Vincent looking at the stars. That's a lovely idea. I can look up at the stars and say how much I love my little grandbabies. And maybe when you look up at the stars, you can feel that come down into your heart. It is a good idea, Violet thinks. She says goodnight to Vincent because her throat is too scratchy to talk anymore. And she looks out at the stars through her bedroom window. She rests her hands on the windowsill and circles her thumbs in the way that the old lady Iris McDonald showed her. This is a message for Iris McDonald whispers Violet to the stars as her thumbs go round and round. Thank you for being my friend in the waiting room and I hope your arm is getting better. Even very remarkable recoveries can take a few days. So don't worry if your arm is not super yet. Lots of love from Violet Mackerel. There are not many mackerels in the phone book. So if you wanna look me up, you still can. That night in bed before she goes to sleep, Violet composes a verse of my favourite things, especially in honour of Iris MacDonald. After that, she feels a bit better. While she is getting better, Violet spends quite a lot of time listening to the radio, which Vincent has put on the small table next to her bed. Best of all, she likes listening to opera music. Even though her voice is getting better at talking, it has mostly been too scratchy to think much about singing. But Violet still likes imagining the radio host saying, and that was Violet Mackerel, who never sang like that before her tonsillectomy. 
This morning, there is no opera music on the radio stations, so Violet decides that she will listen to the gardening channel, since somebody has rung in to ask a question about violets. The leaves on my violets have dead spots. I've tried everything, but it just keeps on happening, says the caller. Hmm, says the host of the gardening channel. I'm afraid I don't know much about growing violets, but if any of our listeners have any ideas, we'd love to hear from you. There's Violet listening to the radio, the gardening channel. Violet wishes she knew the answer to the problem. She would quite like to ring up and talk on the radio. She listens to a few more questions, but they're not about violets, so they're not quite so interesting. Then a lady rings up who says she has an answer to the violet question. So Violet listens carefully again. It sounds like a problem with watering, says the lady. The trick with watering violets is to do it from underneath, not from above. They much prefer to sit in water for a little while than be sprinkled and get water on their leaves. Hmm. There is something very familiar about her voice. Thank you for calling. You've been very helpful, says the radio host. What is your name? Iris MacDonald, says the lady. Mum, yells Violet, too excited to notice that she is yelling and her throat is feeling so much better. The old lady Iris MacDonald is on the radio. There she is yelling, Mum! Mum is not as excited as Violet. This is because she sloshed tea down her dressing gown when she heard Violet yelling and rushed up the stairs to see if she was being eaten by an escaped zoo animal. The next time the radio host gives the telephone number for the gardening channel, Violet writes it down in her notebook. Then she picks up the phone and she dials. Hello, says the radio host. Can you answer any of our gardening questions this morning? Violet thinks, hmm. I agree about watering the violets, she says. I am a violet and I much prefer sitting in the bath to be than to be sprinkled in the shower. There's mum rushing up the stairs. I see, says the radio host, but that's not why I called, says Violet. I called because I met Iris MacDonald in the hospital waiting room when I was having my tonsillectomy. It is funny for Violet to hear her own voice talking on the radio as well as down the phone. I see, says the radio host again, but he sounds as though he doesn't quite see. We were supposed to have tea together so I could see her super arm and she could hear my opera singing voice, says Violet. I'm going to be an opera singer on the radio, she explains. Well, says the radio host, you're on the radio now. Would you like to sing a song for Iris? Yes, please. She pauses for a moment just to make sure Iris McDonald will have time to get nice and close to the radio. Red beads and cardigans made of green knitting, round and round thumbs while you're quietly sitting, robin's eggs and flowers and fingers with rings. These are a few of Iris McDonald's favourite things. <laughs> oh, Violet, you're so cool. When she sings things, Violet jiggles a little bit and her voice does sound a little bit like an opera singer. That was lovely, says the man. Thank you very much for calling, Violet. You're welcome, says Violet. A little while later, the phone rings and it is someone from the gardening channel with a message for Violet and Mum from Iris MacDonald. The message is an invitation to tea tomorrow at 11 o'clock. This time, Violet carefully writes down all the details. Oh. Just when Violet is thinking that 11 o'clock tomorrow will never ever come fast enough, it finally does. To get to the front door of Iris McDonald's house, you have to walk through some of her garden and it is so beautiful. There is even a violet patch with no spots on the leaves. Mum rings the doorbell and Iris McDonald answers it. Her arm is in a plaster cast in a sling, which makes hugs tricky, but she and Violet manage anyway. Thank you very much for inviting us, says Mum. Thank you for coming, says Iris MacDonald. I was so disappointed when I realised we'd parted without exchanging phone numbers. I couldn't think I was going to keep my promise. Violet does not say I told you so, but she does raise her eyebrows just a little bit at her mum. Hmm? See? 
Iris McDonald has a cake with lemon icing and a pot of tea and there are rosy teacups on saucers. Violet and Mum help her to carry it all out from the kitchen as it is difficult to carry lots of things at once if you only have one arm for using. They sit down in the living room and Violet looks at all the little ornaments on the shelves and wonders if they are all small gifts with hidden helpfulness tucked inside them. That's a cake. Yum. Now, says Iris MacDonald, when she has had some cake, even though I am older than 70, I've never had a song written for me before. Could I hear that lovely verse again? Yes, says Violet, and she sings Iris MacDonald's favourite things, jiggling on the final things like a real opera singer. I love it, says Iris MacDonald, and I can't believe how many of my favourite things you managed to squeeze in. Violet smiles. What about your arm, she asks. Is it starting to feel super yet? Hmm, not really, says Iris MacDonald. I still keep your purple lozenge in my pocket just in case, but if you like, I will tell you and your mum a secret about my arm. Violet and Mum listen very carefully because they both quite like secrets. The real truth, whispers Iris MacDonald, is that both of my arms are already pretty special. For all of my working life, I've been a midwife. So I've helped hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of mothers to give birth. That means my arms have been the first arms to hold hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of new babies. That's making me cry. <laughs> making me cry. In fact, some of the babies I've helped to deliver have grown up and come back so I can help them deliver their babies. Violet is just thinking what a good secret it is when mum does a cough <coughs> like a small explosion into her cup of tea. I knew I'd seen you somewhere before, squeaks mum. You were my midwife when I gave birth to Violet. We chose her name because of the perfect Violet that you gave me afterwards. <sighs> Violet Mackle's book is making me cry. Happy, happy tears because it's so beautiful. The last one with Vincent and the blue china bird made me cry a bit too, but it didn't make the tears come out of my eyes. Um... You were my midwife when I gave birth to Violet. We chose her name because of the perfect Violet you gave to me afterwards. The old lady Iris MacDonald's face has the smile of someone who is not very old at all. I often took flowers from my garden to give to the new mothers, she said. Violet can hardly believe it. I have never met anyone with arms like yours before, she says, and I have never met a real opera singer who sings on the radio before, says Iris MacDonald. Before Violet goes home, Iris MacDonald gives her a little envelope and in it is a card which says, Dear Violet, congratulations on your remarkable recovery with love from Iris MacDonald. And tucked inside it is another perfect Violet Wow, fancy that. That Iris MacDonald was the midwife that helped mum give birth to Violet and gave her the Violet which made her name. Oh, that's so beautiful. Oh, I'm loving Violet Mackerel. Oh, that's so beautiful. Oh, being there when someone has a baby is such a special thing. Being having a baby yourself is such a special thing. I was there when some of you were born and saw you take your first breath in the world. Now, let me use my magic circle. I'm going to see in this magic circle what you've all been up to. There's a little boy, Milamu Magic Bruce Freeland, who was flying something high in the sky. I could see that you were doing that. And then I think it crashed on the ground and maybe didn't fly anymore. It looked like a remote control helicopter or something. I liked it a lot. And I saw two little garden sprites, two little girls, Gracie Bella Jelly Bean and Ava Rosie Posey, running around in their beautiful garden. And Gracie Bella Jelly Bean was catching 
cabbage moths. Lots of them, I think she got 10. 10 cabbage moths. Did you get 10 cabbage moths in your special cabbage moth holding container? And Ava Rosie Posey jumping in and out of the hot tub. I could see you and sitting in your very favorite spot on top of the hot compost where it's all snug and warm. <gasps> I wonder what everyone else has been doing that I can see through my special magic circle. <laughs> anyway, it's time for me to go. But I love you and I love you and I love you. I hope you enjoyed today's story. I loved it a lot. Give me a thumbs up. Yes, an up. <laughs> and subscribe if you feel like you want to. <laughs> anyway, bye. I love you, bye.